What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with a new top 10 for you guys today and today guys we are going over top 10 general creatures you should be using on Aberration. Now guys this is very similar to the Scorched Earth one that we did except this time we are doing it for the Aberration map. Now like I said this is just a general list and a general overview of the creatures you should be using and the best creatures that are designed for this map, in my opinion anyway. So guys, if you find yourselves enjoying the video, please don't forget to leave a like and uh, subscribe down below for more as well. And leave a comment on what dinos you think are missing on the list, if you think that at all, or what your list would look like. But guys, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now guys, coming in at number 10, we have the Roll Rat. The Roll Rat should be one of the first tames that you get when you start off on Aberration. Main reason being because he is probably one of the easiest herbivore gatherers to get. You know, you've got the trike, you've got the stego, but the roll rat only requires honey. So guys, because there are beehives found literally everywhere on aberration around this starting area, the fertile lakes and whatnot, it's really easy to grab the honey that you need for a roll rat. Now, taming them is very easy. All you need to do is drop the honey in the hole that they dig. And then once they're tamed up, you can equip the saddle onto them. The saddle is very expensive and it is a relatively high level saddle when you're first starting out on Aberration. So it's a 58 level roll rat saddle. That's what you need to craft it. However, this guy benefits from being able to wander. So for example, if you needed berries or mushrooms and starting off at that low level, you will obviously need those to tame up other creatures. You can stick this guy on wander and he's currently doing it right now. You can see there he is wandering. So this guy will then go around harvesting berries and everything from his surrounding areas, which is great because that is essentially how you're going to get more narcotics in order to tame up other dudes. So now guys, next up we have the Ravager. Now the Ravager should be your next go-to tame after you've got yourself a mole rat because you'll be able to get plenty of narco berries and narcotics and whatnot doing it like that. And then you're going to need obviously a carnivore to be able to defend yourself and go out on a rampage and just deal a heap of damage. And the Ravager is just that boy. Now guys, quick notice, I have bumped the movement speed up on these guys, so you will notice that they literally fly across the surface of Aberration. So that's completely, I mean, it's not normal, but it's just how we've got our settings configured. But anyway, like I was saying, the Ravagers are great. They deal a decent amount of damage. They do get a pack buff as well. You can currently see that dude there is the Alpha, but if we give ourselves some extra levels, you'll see that we become the Alpha. And there we go, we've got the buff up in the corner. And you saw that we were hitting for 100 before. Now we're hitting for 158. That's an extra 58 points of damage that we've got. Now, as well as that, these guys can alternate between meat gathering or hide gathering. If you want meat gathering, you simply uh, left click, I believe, and then hide gathering is for a right click. So depending on what you want more of, you can condition your Ravager to gather that for you. I stand mistaken, right click is for meat gathering, left click is for hide and whatnot. So as well as that guy, these guys reduce the weight of certain resources in the inventory by 50%. So they're very similar to Argy's in that matter. And these guys are really good for just taking them with you everywhere because you can easily, whoa. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. So you can see that the metal in their inventory weighs 25. Meanwhile, in ours, it weighs 50. So they halve the weight of resources by a certain amount in their inventories. Now, this also works for wood, stone, and, you know, thatch and all that other stuff. As well as that, these guys have a really large weight source. You can see they're 880 on this guy. That's really impressive. So these guys are really good for doing that. Like I said, they get their pack buff, and all you need to do to tame them is bowler and train them. Once you've got a roll rat and you've got narcotics coming out of your ears, that won't be a problem for you. And their saddle is only level 47. Now, you can obviously go about taming up a raptor or something else, but the ravagers will crap all over the raptors. The only thing the raptors have going for themselves is that pin ability, which you will need to watch out for as a ravager. But here's an example of a beehive. These things are everywhere on Aberration, and uh, that is going to conclude uh, the Ravager at number 9, guys. So, let's move on to number 8. Alrighty, guys, coming in at number 8, we have the Light Pets. Now, once you've got your Roll Rats sorted, you've got your Ravagers sorted, you're then going to want to start working on getting, like, your Bulb Dogs, your Shine Horns, your Feather Lights, and... What's the other one? The glow tails, that's it. So these guys are great because you're going to be using these guys to get down into the deep dark depths of Aberration. On this top area, you don't really need them too much, hence why they are 
lower on this list and I wanted to put the Roll Rat and the Ravager up there first because these guys aren't as vital. But these guys are really good and you know they just protect you from the Nameless. That is essentially all they do. And obviously they can tell you if there is a max level creature in the area. These guys are great for that and each of them have their own sort of... Each of them are as good as each other. It's all dependent on your personal taste, which one you find cuter. I personally like the Feather Lights and the Shine Horns the most. But yeah, that's all there really is to say about these guys. Let's move on to number seven. Now guys, coming in at number seven, we have the Anki. Now, you're gonna have your Roll Rat, you've got all your stuff, other stuff sorted. Now you wanna work on getting as much metal as possible. And the Anki really shines on Aberration because there are so many so many goddamn metal nodes, especially on this bridge alone. You can get a slot capped Anki easily just from doing this bridge. Now, obviously, you're going to need a companion dino to obviously help yourself out because your Anki will just get stuck down with the weight, and nobody wants that. So make sure you bring another dino. There are There is another dino on this list that will be making an appearance that you can use in tandem with the Yankee in order to farm this entire bit, and it's really useful. But you can see here just from swinging that, we've got quite a bit of metal already. Mind you, we haven't leveled this guy up. He's only level 60, so he's only got 200 weight, but you can farm so much metal here. It is ridiculous. Not just in this location alone, all over Aberration. Keep an eye out for these blue rocks, and you'll find that you will gather so much metal. But guys, there's not really much else to say about the Anki. You all know what he does. You all know what he's good at. So let's move on to number six. Now guys, coming in at number six, we have the Baryonyx. Now the Baryonyx is great once again for Aberration, obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be on this list because he's both a land mount and a water mount. Now Aberration might, not, might look like he doesn't have a lot of water on it, but it really does. There is quite a lot of water on the Aberration map. So you're going to need something that can easily get you around those locales as well as on the land. And the Baryonyx is a great mount for that. He's got his stun attack in the water, so all the electric eels, the angler fishes, they won't bother you. You can see there we just stunned that poor Electrolophilophilus. Love trying to pronounce that thing. And this angler fish is coming over, he wants a piece of us, and just like that we've wrecked them. Now, as well as that, these guys get a mad bonus from consuming fish meat, where their health just skyrockets in terms of regeneration. They get a lot of health regeneration from eating fish meat. The only concern that you have to worry about is getting grabbed by the Karkonosses, as Karkonosses can pull you off your Baryonyx mount. Don't mistake me, the Baryonyxes can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Karkonosses. You just have to watch out for getting grabbed. So make sure you bring some weaponry along with you that you can use to defend yourself if you do plan on going up against some Karkonosses, because you will need a solid set of armor as well as a strong weapon to take them on. But this guy is great. And then once you need to get out of the water, if you're trying to get back to your base, you can take this guy on to the land and get him to wherever you need to go. He's great for that as well. But guys, let's move on to number five now. Now guys, coming in at number five, we have the Karkonos. The Karkonos is one of my favorite mounts in all of Ark. Who doesn't want to ride around on a giant freaking crab? As well as that, these guys' abilities are pretty damn crazy. So you can currently see we're holding a the Baryonyx in our right arm, and now we've just picked up an Arthur Blura. You can actually toss these guys. So you see there, you can toss them. Now you can pretty much do this with anything up to the size of a Stego. Stegos are the largest creatures that the Baryonyx, uh, sorry, not the Baryonyx, the Karkonos can throw. Now you can also aim where you wanted to throw these creatures as well. Lobble it, lobbying them, literally that high we've just gone up a level okay almost he almost made it we were just shy we've almost gone up a level in aberration now as well as that these guys can jump pretty damn high as well so you can use these guys to navigate the terrain of aberration and if you do need to get out of the water you can actually just continually jump with these guys and they're really good they don't have an oxygen meter so you don't have to worry about losing oxygen and they can easily go toe to toe with any of the creatures you find in the water most of the creatures won't even aggro on you as well which is really good except for like the electrophiluses i'm pretty sure they just aggro on everything but you can see that if you've got a baryonyx with you don't stress because you'll just stun lock them and you can kill them now i did mention earlier that there was a creature you can use with the anki in order to harvest metal and this is that creature don't need to pump weight on the Karkonos, you don't need to pump anything. You can obviously pump weight, but it's not necessary. Essentially, all you need to do 
is have someone, it's a two-man job. I mean, you could do it with one person. It would just take you a very long time. All you simply need to do is have someone on the Anki, grab said Anki, drop the Anki where you need to drop it, and then have the Anki swing. And then you can just pick up again with the Anki and just constantly move them. Now, this is really great because the Anki actually just moves forward every time you do it. So you can see there we picked up the Baryonyx and you can drop him again. Now you're, you can spin and everything. Now if you need to, you can also lob them. It's not necessary, but it does help if you need to, if you're trying to get to a drop or something like that and your Anki is slot capped, you can do that with the Karkonos. It's a great mount to have. I really do love the Karkonos and I do believe I've covered all of his abilities. So guys, let's move on to number four. Now guys, coming in at number four, we have the Spino. Now the Spino is essentially an upgraded version of Baryonyx. He hits harder, he has more health, he's faster, he's just a much bigger, leaner machine. This guy is great for traversing aberration. You'll find these guys everywhere. They are abundant everywhere. But these guys are really good because they're probably the strongest, mm, one of the strongest carnivals you can get on the map. They can swim in the water so you can take them down into the depths of aberration. They're, they're semi-great tanks for trying to tame uh, Reapers if you need to like farm Reaper Kings, uh, not Reaper Kings, Reaper Queens, in order to get them to, you know, impregnate you. You can use these guys. They've got plenty of health. They can deal the damage if you need to kill them. They're just all around great mount. Now they do get their buff in water. They can switch to their bipedal stance, which causes them to deal more damage. And these guys can also be used for PVP on Aberration as well. These guys are really strong, they're really solid, and I would recommend you tame up a Spino as soon as you can on Aberration to utilize these guys to the fullest of their abilities. So guys, let's move on to number three. Now guys, coming in at number three, we have the Rock Drake. That's right, the Rock Drake has finally made it on the list. So guys, the Rock Drake is pretty much the, one of the top tier dinos you can get on Aberration. He is absolutely amazing for traversing the entire map because of his sticky ability, because he has the ability to glide. He is the only flyer you can get on Aberration. You can obviously bring Monagamars over from like Extinction and stuff like that. But if there is no transfers allowed, then these guys are your next best friend. These guys will be able to do everything for you. Get down to the Rock Drake Trench to gather more eggs. Check. Take on Reaper King, Reaper Queens to get impregnated. Check. Travel around the entirety of Aberration. Check. These guys can get you to the surface as well, so you can go drop farming. They're relatively fast swimmers as well, and they hit very, very hard. They can also cloak. If you need to get away from something, they can cloak, and you will technically be hidden from that. You can use these guys in PvP as well, sometimes duping out your enemies with the cloaking ability if your opponent isn't able to see you that clearly. I have used it a couple of times to get away from some bad people trying to kill me, and it definitely has helped. Now, as well as that, you can also use this guy to detect when Reapers are nearby because his crests stand up. You can see they're currently flat. Okay, let's just try and center ourselves. You can see they're currently flat at the moment. The moment a Reaper comes into the area, the crest will stand up on end, and that is how you know there is a Reaper in the area. These guys are really fun. I do really like Rock Drakes, and in my opinion, they're actually the fastest flyers you can get in the game because their glide ability is just so fast. And you can do the dash ability at the end of their glide as well, which really benefits them and getting around. So guys, let's move on to number two on the list. Now guys, coming in at number two on the list, we have the Reaper Kings. These guys are one of the best creatures, obviously, since he's at number two, you can get on Aberration. They're, ext I mean, not extremely difficult. They're very difficult to get sometimes. It can be extremely buggy trying to get impregnated by a Reaper Queen, but it is well worth it. Once you get one of these guys, you are pretty much invincible to any wild dino on the map. These guys will sort them out with no problems. Now, there's no saddle for this guy, but this guy does have natural armor. And if there are no light creatures or light sources present, you will be safe and you won't take the, what's the word? You won't take the boosted damage, I guess, the standard amount of damage that you would take if there was a light pet in the vicinity. So for example, you can currently see that we don't have our uh, glow pet on. 
Uh, the moment we put our glow pad on, you'll notice that our Reaper will actually get this glowing effect on it. Now, he doesn't lose... I don't think he actually loses health. Does he lose health? He doesn't actually lose health, but he will take increased damage. So, for example, if we were to pull out... Whoa, okay. Raptor Claws isn't supposed to be here. Uh, if we pull out a long neck right and we go like that, and we go bullets, you'll see that there will be a stark... No, what is it? Ammo? There we go. So, we'll chuck this bad boy down here, and we'll pop a shot off while he's got the glow pet effect, while he's affected by the glow. Okay, damage numbers aren't showing up. That's wonderful. Let's take a look at his health. Take a look at his health. You can see there, he's lost about 300 health almost. So, if we were to turn our glow pet off, you'll see that he loses it, and he's at what? 13, 10, we'll say. Why is it? Why is it thingy trying to aggro? Okay, for example, you can see here, these nameless, they're hitting him for 10. We turn our glow pad on, he will start taking a little bit more damage. Then again, he's also dealing more damage. So you saw there 52 damage instead of the 10. So you want to make sure that you've got no glow pads on. Now you can use this guy to soak, but do be careful, like I said, because if they've got a glow pad, they will absolutely decimate your Reaper King. Now, as well as that, he's got two more attacks, the tail shooting attack and the spin attack. Spin attack is great for knocking away everything. If you're just annoyed at stuff, you can use that and knock them off cliffs and whatnot. And yeah, Reaper King, he's really amazing. Like I said, guys, you can also hide um, items in him. For example, all you need to do is hold on to him and you can actually bury him under the ground. And you can store items on him like this, preventing players from taking your items. Now, players can obviously find your Reaper King uh, burrows, if they've got Diplodocuses or Direwolves or stuff like that, they can find it. But this is a great way to hide certain loot as well. So guys, let's move on to number one. Alrighty guys, and finally coming in at number one, we have the Megalosaurus. This guy, hands down, is the king of aberration. You literally cannot go anywhere without taking one of these guys. These guys are beasties. They deal so much damage since it's permanently nighttime on Aberration. So these guys never lose the buff. And you can see here they were hitting harder than the Reaper King does. Granted, they don't have as much health, but Jesus Louises. These guys pack a punch wherever they go on the Aberration map. These guys are one of the best dinos to use for PvP on Aberration because of the damage they deal. You guys saw they were hitting harder than the Reaper King that we just had. These guys are great. They can also pick up players and small teams with their mouth. You saw us pick up the Titan Boa and pretty much just munch it into next week. You can also use these guys to tame up other creatures if you are in a um, tribe. For example, if I go about and pick up... I can't pick up a Royal Rat. I can pick up the Titan Boa. Pretend the Titan Boa is something else. So if we pick up the Titan Boa, you can have your tribe mate actually trank the Titan Boa or say, for example, I don't know... Uh, a Ravager. Say for example a Ravager is in the mouth, you can actually get your tribe mate to trank it and you can hold it in your mouth without the Titan of Bower attack. Or you can just straight up murder it, it's entirely up to you. But the Megalosauruses are great because they're just PvP efficient, they can take on Rockwell very easily. I do believe you can pull, you can't pull out guns on their back which is one downside for Rockwell. So make sure you do have someone on a Stego. But these guys are on hands down the kings and queens of the Aberration map. And that is why they get the number one spot on this list. So guys, thank you very much for watching. That is going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more. Let me know what you liked about the list. Let me know what you didn't like about the list. All is appreciated, guys. All feedback. So guys, without further ado, let's finish up the video. Thank you very much for watching. I got this soda. Remy boys and